Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Here we're going to talk about some electrical systems. Electrical systems can be a real mystery to a lot of folks, and so we're going to take an overview of how the system works in general. We're going to talk about all the different components in the system, and then in the end we're going to look at some specific diagnostics. If you're looking to diagnose a specific thing, go ahead and jump to the end, but let's dive right in and look at how this all works. All right, real quick before we get started, we have a live system here. We want to talk about a few safety things. First off, you don't want to be wearing a ring, metal watch, anything like that, because if it were to become the path of electricity, it could instantly become glowing red hot and you could be burnt by it. We don't have a lot of voltage, so you're not going to necessarily get shocked by the system very easily, but that amperage, if it's short-circuited, can lead to something getting real hot real quick. The other thing is that because we're dealing with a live system, the engine could potentially start or run you want to be sure all the shields are in place, that you're in a safe place relative to the machine, and that you're generally aware of the mechanical systems and that um, you know, you're, you're set up for this. Now, um, the other thing is that if you're going to disconnect the battery, you don't want to take the positive off first. This is a little counterintuitive, but if you were to put a wrench on this positive post here and unscrew this and the wrench were to hit the frame of the machine, it would arc. You don't want that. So you want to disconnect your ground first so that you have an open circuit and then a wrench wouldn't arc off of here and then when you put it back on you want to put the positive first and then the ground. So there's a few ground rules just to be aware of um, uh, because when you're doing diagnostics and you're not familiar with what's going on it's very easy to forget something. So keep those things in mind. All right we're going to go through the major components of the system first. Here we have the battery. This is a 375 um, cranking amp battery or a 300 cold cranking amp battery. Some of the big box stores sell batteries that look like this, and they're, but they're lower amperage rated for smaller engines. You want to be sure to get a battery that's capable of your machine. All the starts it's going to be going through, you don't want to um, have issues with the battery dying prematurely. So then we have a ground wire that goes to the engine, and these are sturdy solder dipped battery cables. Here we have the positive goes to the starter. You may have a solenoid beside the starter like this instead of going straight to here. But these are your, your main connections. Um, nothing will work correctly if either of these are loose. You, they have to be um, well connected. Then we have our wires going into the harness. You have our ground to the harness and our uh, battery positive to the harness. Component wise, we'll start down um, here, actually all the way down by the carburetor. There's a solenoid. You hear it make that clicking noise. And what that's doing is it's opening up the fuel flow into the carburetor. You turn the key off, shuts off the fuel flow. Here we have the regulator. So this charges, controls the voltage to charge the battery. The yellow wire coming off of it leads to the um, battery. The two here that come from the flywheel, that's from the stator. Um, that AC power going into this regulator. We talked about the starter for a second. So this starter here has a solenoid in here. It's a, it's a big contactor switch. When it's actuated, that plunger drops down, there's a rocker arm in here, and it throws a gear into the flywheel. So there's positive engagement, and this side is the motor. Green wire is what energizes or engages the starter. Going into the harness here, we call this a pigtail. It's the first connector on the harness, and these wires lead to different components in the engine. And this Kawasaki pigtail fits just about any Kawasaki engine uh, powered mower we've built over the years. We also have other pigtails, for example, this one is for a Kohler, and it's actually common on an EFI engine to put a diode here, because what happens is when you send power to something like the clutch, like this right here, when this clutch disengages, it sends a high voltage spike for you know, milliseconds back into the system, and that could potentially damage some of the computer com components. Now, they do have isolation built into the, the ECU there, but we put extra isolation on the system side of the machine. So that's a diode um, there. And it's just connecting between the ignition and the ground. And it, you know, it won't ground out the ignition normally, but when that spike comes back through the harness, its polarity is opposite. And this kills that spike. This pigtail can also be used to repower. Um, any Kohler engine, even if it's not an EFI. This goes on the ground by the engine, this connects to the Kohler, this connects to the right harness. Uh, we also have a Briggs pigtail, similar to that, for 
uh, some of the newer Briggs engines for converting them over. So that's the pigtail component here. Going up into the harness, let's first follow the battery positive. So battery positive goes through a fuse and goes up to the key switch. We have the charge wire, which goes through a fuse and also goes to the key switch. Now, it can be a little intimidating when you look at a harness like this, you see all these wires, oh man, what's going on here? But what's crucial is look at your schematic. And it's um, not really that complicated because there's some things that really help you understand this. So like we talked about the purple, it goes to the key switch. And then from the key switch, we have these orange wires here. When you turn the key on, it connects the battery to the orange. So that's our ignition circuit. And that orange wire just daisy chains everywhere through the harness. So anywhere you see orange, that's your ignition circuit. You should, when your key is on, you should have positive power, 12 volts at all your orange terminals. We also have other circuits in here, like um, the green circuit. So this green circuit is for start. When we turn the key on, energizes the green wire, goes to the blade switch. So if the blade switch is on, it won't let us start the engine. You have to have the blade switch off. You wouldn't want to start the engine with the blades on. Then it goes through brake switch, so you have to have the brake on to start the engine. That green wire comes here to the starter post. Um, there's several other circuits in here, but the, the real principle there to understand is that a lot of these wires daisy chain through the system and you got to follow the schematic. If you take a highlighter and just follow the power from the battery or whatever component you're working on, trace it back, make sure you know, you're getting power where you need to go as you go upstream. Both the ground side and the positive side, you have to follow both of them up to where you think you may have a problem. Um, some of the other components besides the harness, we have a key switch here. So this is pretty common for a lot of different machines. Some machines don't put their charge uh, to the key switch. Some go straight to the battery post. We have the purple coming up here. So we're in the off connect, uh, position. The purple's not connected to anything and this white kills the engine, connects it to the black ground wire here. So when we're off, the white and black are connected and the, everything else is open. When we're in the run position, the purple will be connected to orange, so that's our ignition, and it'll be connected to yellow, which is our charge. So the charge, the ignition, the battery, all connected together, and the white wire is open. It's not grounded out, so the engine can run. When we go to start, very similar, except for we'd energize the green wire to crank the engine. So that's the key switch. The hour meter is just your positive and your negative to energize the hour meter. We have a relay, which is the clutch relay turns the clutch on and off. We have a PTO switch, which has several circuits in it. Um, like we said, the green wire is your starter interlock. The ignition wire, so when the key's on, it gives us power here. We turn the switch on, it energizes this purple wire. And then over here, we, this is actually a time delay override on this end here. So that's your, your blade switch. We have a brake switch here. We have our platform switch, so on a right mower, our safety switch is in the platform. It makes it very intuitive to operate the machine versus one in your, in your handles. Um, so that's a pretty straightforward switch there. So uh, overall, that's the system. Oh, we'll talk about the clutch for a second. So clutch has a, a positive and a ground going into it. It's an electromagnet, and when it energizes, it um, pulls that plate up against the uh, rotor of the clutch and gauges the blade. So that's our major components. Um, if you have a remote um, solenoid, you have something like this, and you'll have one post going to the battery and the other going straight to the starter and your green wire energizing it, and it must be grounded. If this isn't grounded through the fastener, or through a ground wire to the frame or to the engine, it um, won't work correctly. So that's the uh, solenoid. So overall, that's some of the main um, aspects of the system. Let's get into some of the, um, the troubleshooting that you may need to do on your machine. So there's a few things we could talk about. First off would be a no charge situation. A no charge situation means that you may have um, jump started the machine, it runs, but then the battery dies pretty quickly again and it's just not holding a charge. Could be the battery has just been um, drained too many times and the plates have uh, become to the point where they won't uh, properly work. <clears throat> These are sealed batteries, so you shouldn't have to um, be opening them up to fool with the acid. 
Um, or they're service-free batteries, they're not sealed, but they're service-free. So uh, could be your battery. When you're looking at batteries, um, the big box stores sell battery. It looks a lot like this, but um, you want to be sure you have the original amperage that the mower manufacturer had for the battery. Just because the case looks the same doesn't mean that battery is made for that machine. And if the battery's not big enough, it may work at first, but it's not going to last very long. That battery will die pretty quickly. So you want to be sure that your ground and positive are connected well here. Nothing's loose, because if you had a loose ground, either on the harness or the engine, that charge is not going to work correctly. And, you know, there might be enough of a ground connection where it arcs and lets the engine start, but uh, it won't let the um, regulator charge the battery. So make sure these are good. Check your yellow wire, make sure it's plugged on there well. It's plugged in the key switch well. Um, any disconnect of the yellow wire, check the fuse. Be sure all that's intact. It's easy to do the visual stuff, so you want to do all the visual stuff right away. So if all that checks out, then you can use a multimeter to just be sure what's going on. So multimeter, you want to set it to voltage, <coughs> connect to the battery, and if you get 12, 12 and a half volts, that would be battery voltage. Less than that would be a battery that's starting to die. The charge system is going to give you 13 volts or higher, 13 to 14 volts. 12 and a half means your regulator is not working. 13 means your regulator is working. 13 and a half, it's working good. So um, measure voltage there at the battery, and you'll know whether you, you're getting a charge. The battery's just not taking that charge. So um, you can easily do that. Now, if you're not getting a charge here and all your circuits check out, and you can do a continuity test, like you can do a continuity test um, from your uh, charge point here. You disconnect it and check continuity back to the positive post. If you have continuity, you know the harness is good. Uh, you can do a ground from here to the ground of um, the regulator. Make sure you have a ground connection to it. If that all checks out, you're still not getting a charge, then there is a way to check the stator coil inside here. You can disconnect um, the connection here, and you're looking for AC power there coming off that. And you'd want to look at the engine manufacturer's service manual for specifics on what voltage, what engine speed you're looking for there. So that can be checked too. So that'd be a no charge situation, a few of the things to look at. Um, also, we have an accessory connection here. So if you have an accessory that's drawing too much power and it can't keep up with it, that could also be an issue. Uh, something to just be aware of. Now, a few other things could happen. We could have a situation where the engine may start and run, but you engage the blades and nothing happens. Well, first off, there's two scenarios. One is that you pull the blade switch up and the engine dies. You pull this, the engine dies. That means that one whole half of the system, would, the issue would be in one half of the system. If you pull this and the engine doesn't die, then you know that it's towards the clutch side of the system. So let's first talk about that situation where it might die. So if you pull this up and the engine dies, that means that the safety switch is not releasing the kill relay. So things to check there are the red wire coming back up to the time delay, making sure that's intact. Um, the switch needs to be working correctly. Um, check the terminals going into the relay. The relay itself could be bad. And one thing to note about the relay is, although this is similar to a standard automotive relay, you want to use the original OEM relay here because there is, um, this is a heavy duty potted relay. Any ones that are open, they're not going to last very long. But also there's something in here that will actually suppress the spike when it's turned off. Um, and if that's not there, it can burn out other components, arc against contacts in the, in the other parts of the system. So you want to be sure to use uh, the original relay um, there. So uh, it could be a, a relay issue. Now, if you pull the switch and the engine doesn't die and the blades still don't come on, then that means that there is probably an issue with either the blade switch or the power going down to the clutch. So um, if the engine's running, we assume that we have an ignition here at the orange. You can check that. But this blue wire should be sending uh, positive down to here to the red wire. And that can be checked with a multimeter. And then you can also follow your ground back. So your ground here comes up to the relay. Make sure that the relay is uh, sending a ground down there. <clears throat> now, you could have, don't dismiss the fact that you may have a mechanical issue. When the clutch wears, the gap in here increases. 
And if that gap gets too big, the clutch won't actually pull in. And um, we have another clutch video that goes some specifics about um, how to diagnose a clutch, but that's one thing to realize. You could also have potentially a broken wire or something in here. The coil could be burnt out, and you can measure resistance on the clutch coil to uh, check what state it's in. Again, check the clutch video for more on that. <clears throat> it's uncommon, but you could have a, a time delay that needs to be replaced. They're difficult to diagnose, um, but if nothing else checks out, it potentially could be a time delay. Now, a lot of sit-down mowers may have a time delay. Uh, some of our stand-on mowers have a time delay. Our newer machines, we've actually gotten rid of it because just with the stroke of the platform, we've eliminated a lot of the clutch clicking on and off uh, situations. And um, anytime you can eliminate a component, it makes the system more reliable. So some of the newer machines actually don't have this. All right, so that would be a no blade situation. Now you can also have a no start situation. We've talked about a lot of the starting components. The green wire is, this, is the um, start circuit. We have a brake switch here. One easy thing is if, if somebody pulled the blade switch on after the machine was parked there and you try to start it, put the brake switch down, nothing happens, right? So just check this, it's real easy. Make sure the blade switch is off. Yeah, so we got a live system there. You have to have your brake switch down. Um, the start circuit, it's your purple wire going to the key switch, and from your key switch, your green wire going to your uh, clutch switch, brake switch, back to the starter. So things to look for are these switches for the starter. You can actually tap on the starter the side of the solenoid or the starter motor if anything's frozen up in there. Don't hit it too hard because you can break the magnets loose inside here and create other issues. But sometimes tapping on the starter uh, works as a temporary field fix to get it um, going. That's easy to do. Now, if, if the whole system checks out, you're getting power in your green wire, you have a solid ground, solid connection, and then it's most likely going to be your starter motor. Um, so that would be a no-start situation. Anyhow, I hope today's video helps you understand a little bit how your electrical system works. Some of the things to look at, um, you know, I tried staying general enough that it could apply, it could apply to most any brand mower. Um, but the important thing is to get your schematic out and look at what's going on. So you want to follow your ground wire and your positive wire to wherever you think that the system's not performing correctly. Get a highlighter, trace that out, and just think it through. You don't want to throw parts at the system um, just to eliminate possibilities. But I would say that be careful how much time you put into diagnostics. When we look at uh, warranty work at dealers, if the components are proven out and the harness is not working, it's really not worth opening up a harness. Um, typically, for the cost of a harness versus the diagnostics, it ends up being less costly just to put a new harness in there, guaranteed everything to be um, original like the factory. So be cautious about putting too much time into the system. You gotta think it through carefully, but also move on if you know what components, or you think that it's one of two or three components. Um, and if they're relatively inexpensive, just go ahead, make it work, make it good, because uh, time becomes very expensive in diagnosing the electrical system. And that's where your expertise as a technician or your ability to diagnose what's going on can go a long ways. You can save a lot of time if you really understand what's going on here. So think it through. Hopefully this helps you. If you're broken down in the field, um, you know, a few things you could check for. Or as a technician, um, a better understanding of how a right lawnmower type electrical harness works. Thanks for watching.